Uh, just uh, touching on the expansion uh, strategy that you've put in place, and obviously the money that you are planning to raise uh, is for expansion. Give us uh, an indication of exactly how that money is going to be allotted over the region. Um, uh, the region, basically, um, certainly Kenya, we're very strong in Nairobi. Um, uh, we've got stores in Mombasa. We'd like to expand that. And other secondary towns, uh, Kisumu, Eldoret, towns that are showing a, a good head uh, with regards to economic growth. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Uganda is a very big opportunity for us. We've already started trading in Uganda. We'd like to take more brands into that market. We are seeing good uh, commercial retail property development happening in uh, Rwanda as well and, and Uganda. Uh, um, and that gives us a good platform to then mm. uh, possibly attend to uh, the bigger Eastern African region, if mm. you like. With well, the $10 million that you are planning to raise, how many stores exactly can you open up with these funds? Well, what we've, we, we've basically planned out in our, in our business plan 2010-2014 uh, um, with existing brands. We've got nine uh, international very competitive brands in the aspirational space. Um, just with those brands, we could roll out from the current 23 stores uh, to over 50 stores. Mm. Uh, and in terms of going forward, you're talking about 50 stores. What exactly are you looking at? I mean, you, look, you are currently uh, very focused on the East African uh, region, which is, of course, very lucrative from a consumer perspective. Uh, 50 stores and obviously uh, going bigger going forward. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, at this stage, obviously, uh, as a company, one has to take the growth steps uh, in stages and uh, the Eastern African region uh, presents the first opportunity. Uh, beyond that, uh, the, the, the directors of the company will continue to, to seek and look at the opportunity, uh, opportunities mm. beyond uh, the, these existing boundaries. The market, of course, talking about an initial public offering and, of course, uh, Deacon's listing on the market in the next 12 to 18 months. Is that strategy on track after uh, you, uh, uh, of course, secure the uh, $10 million that, of course, is uh, busy uh, being discussed uh, by the investor community? I think very much on track. Uh, obviously subject to uh, compliance uh, with capital markets authorities, regulations. Uh, um, uh, we, we have undertaken and the directors are very, very clear and focused uh, that um, shareholders should have the opportunity to have a liquid share. Uh, so that's something that we certainly have in our plan. Uh, we will pursue it subject to environmental, uh, economic uh, and environments at the time that we want to do this uh, and subject to, to, to acquiring the regulatory uh, approvals. Mm. It's quite interesting because there is no real uh, clothing retail offering on the NSC at this point in time. We know that there has been food retailers, some doing relatively well, uh, others under pressure. What is your view about the clothing environment as a whole from a competitive uh, perspective uh, in the East African region, given the fact that, yes, there is great demand from a consumer perspective, but the reality is that 50% of Kenyans, for example, are still living below $1 a day. I think, Eleni, um, one has to take the view of the African economies and how they are performing. We are seeing double-digit economic growth rates. We are seeing markets consolidating uh, in areas where markets have been very fragmented. We are seeing a bulging uh, and growing middle class. And when we took that view and, and started to understand what numbers will start to drive towards the middle class, when we look at the construction of residential areas, of commercial centers, uh, of shopping malls, uh, if you like. Um, mm -hmm. In Nairobi today uh, is host to the development of over 10 new shopping malls. Uh, Kampala the same, Dar es Salaam the same. And I dare say going to West Africa, into Upper Southern Africa, you are seeing the consolidation of markets. You are seeing a, a, a strong growing economic uh, performance by the, by the governments and the peoples of, of those nations. Mm -hmm. And therein lies the opportunity uh, for consumerism and, and for, for retailers like us to offer goods and services that people aspire for. Uh, well, it's quite interesting, you know, just looking at some of the reports when it comes to Kenya, it seems that the majority of Kenyans, uh, Kenyans uh, wear Mutumba, uh, and of course that, of course, being uh, the second-hand market. How competitive is the environment going to become, given the fact that a lot of uh, textiles are, of course, produced in Kenya, and it seems that there is a lucrative market for the second-hand uh, clothing as well. I don't. Th I don't think that that's peculiar to Kenya. It's, it's peculiar to developing markets mm. um, that people do get secondary products. 
into, 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 into those particular markets and that creates a, a unfair competition because obviously the rules of the games are, are fairly different and when you speak of Mitumba, uh, I guess you, you're speaking of second-hand clothing. Um, it has its place, it has its role, but, but within the middle class and upper uh, class environments, people are much more aspirational. Um, and this is globalization. People want to consume goods and services that others are consuming around the world. Mm. Uh, and that market, marketplace will continue uh, to evolve, continue to develop as governments uh, of Africa uh, get a hold on what the playing field is going to look like uh, in the longer term. So um, I, I have no, no doubts whatsoever, and I, ha I have seen through the performance of retailers in these markets that the growth is going to come through as we formalize these markets, as we consolidate these markets, and as customers demand better service, better quality, and better pricing. Mm. Uh, it's quite interesting looking at some of uh, you know, your, your portfolio at this point in time and the fact that you are currently uh, supplying the market with the likes of Mr. Price, with Truers, Identity, uh, Woolworths, uh, very important brands in the South African market. Tell us about the just distribution lines at this point in time because we know that Mr. Price, of course, imports a lot of their goods from the likes of China. Any plans to import directly from China, of course, uh, in that way, then you can pass on uh, the, uh, the prices, the price differences to the consumer at the end of the day. Very interesting question, and uh, uh, you've clearly done your homework, Eleni. Um, um, of course, w w the supply chain is going to uh, have to develop uh, much more strongly than routing product through South Africa. It's something that South Africa, South African investors, South African retailers, South African manufacturers will have to start contending with and investing in in the long term, creating import hubs or logistic hubs that can create more uh, efficient uh, supply chains uh, into the markets that they want to play in. And this is something that we have discussed uh, at length uh, with the brands that we represent in this, uh, uh, this region. And I, I do know as a matter of fact that they have uh, started strong initiatives uh, towards rejigging, if you like, uh, the logistics and the supply chain in order to, to deliver a better price uh, to the customer uh, in the African region. Mucheri, also just touching on Africa as a whole and when it comes to uh, textiles and the textile industry, we know that China, of course, is a force to be reckoned with. Uh, competition is relatively rife and we know that Kenya, of course, produces uh, a lot of uh, cloths as well and textiles because we uh, see a lot of cotton being produced from that region. Any plans to be involved in the textile industry as well as uh, Deacon's brand? I think not just for Deacon's, but uh, for strong retailers around Africa. If the product is made in Africa and it is right for the consumer and the consumer chooses uh, to purchase that product, we have no choice but to carry that product, provided it meets the quality uh, and the service standards that the customer wants. This is the whole effect of liberalization and globalization, that customers around the world will be able to choose uh, the, the product that they want, the brand that they want. Uh, and that's what our role is here uh, in the marketplace, is to deliver what the customer wants. And it's not going to be driven by nationalism uh, and inward-looking policies. It's going to be driven uh, by what the market has to say.